from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. to Central and South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Join us on Praise the Lord from New York City as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teaching to encourage and inspire and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. God bless you and welcome to Praise the Lord. I'm your host, Paul B. Mitchell, pastor of Changing Lives Christian Center, Brooklyn, New York. And today we have a wonderful show for you today. We have some wonderful people that's with us today and you're going to be blessed. You don't want to miss this. Robin Donanoff, and he is the senior pastor of Healing Ministries. And so I don't want you to move because if you move, you're going to miss it. We have some wonderful men and women of God who's going to pour into our spirits today. Oh, yes, he is. That oh, was powerful. Almighty. Awesome. 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 Pastor Robin Dinanaw. Amen. Amen. Welcome to praise the Lord. Thank you. And it's thank a you blessing for to have here you today. here with well, us. Now, you. you are you are senior pastor of Robin Healing Ministries. You are also the founder of Emmanuel Full Gospel Assemblies. You are also an author of a book entitled Breakthrough, The Breakthrough of Fasting. Mm -hmm. Still, miracles still, still happen. Happens. Let me say it again. The Breakthrough of Fasting and That's Miracles still, still Happen. What, miracles what, still happen. Yes, it is. What caused you to write this book? Oh, well, a miracle have actually took place in my personal life, first of all. Um, from a child growing up, I've got rejection in my life, looking for love, looking for something that will bring peace in my life, because I grew up being sick and uh, had to be separated from my brothers and my sister. And um, I just know that there is a purpose for my life. Yes. And I was looking forward, how can I really discover that purpose in my life? And that is when I found Jesus Christ, awesome. and it was a miracle. Yes. Indeed. And up to, to today, I still believe miracles still happen. Yes, it does. And that is the purpose of writing that book, Miracles Still Happens. Wonderful. And there are so much stories that I can go on and on with to, to experience and testify of the goodness of Christ. Awesome. And the miraculous things that he has done, not only for me, but for people that has come in my path. Wonderful. Yes. We all could use a miracle, couldn't we? Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Now, you, you, did you grow up in a Christian home? Or oh, no. Did you always experience this presence of the Lord in your life? Or were you raised in, 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 in the body of Christ? Oh, no, I did not. I was born in a non-Christian home, and I was growing up. But I was stricken with a disease called rubella. Rubella. And, uh, yes. Tell and us about that. It was a disease that, it, it's curable. But when I was seven years old, I was stricken with this disease, and uh, that was caused rejection because I did not have a normal childhood days because everybody, their parents will tell them, well, stay away from him because it's very contaminated. Right. 
And um, even with my siblings, my, my parents will just keep me away from my brothers. And I wanted to play. I want to be a normal child. But I just could not because they don't want me to be around them. And that is because that um, uh, the cure or the vaccination for rubella was introduced in 1969. Growing up in a third world country, it wasn't introduced until 1978. And I was stricken with it in 1977. And because of that, I was, uh, I was sent to live with my grandparents. And thank God for Bible-believing Christian grandmothers yes. who believe in miracles. Yes. And because I was separated, that what makes me start searching. I, I want to discover something for my life. I want to be a normal child. I, I want to be like every little child out That's there, right. playing, laughing, uh, uh, be together. And, uh, and I wasn't having that. Yes. And that makes me look for something beyond until I discovered Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. You know, there, there are so many uh, young people that can relate to that. Yes. Especially, well, it's everywhere, but especially here, because if, if they have a problem, yes. you know, a, a disease or an ailment or an infirmity, you know, other young people can be very... Embarrassed. Well, well they, you up. know, they, they can be pretty brutal to people who they don't consider quote-unquote normal. Yes. I mean, just... Tell us, how, how did you find some kind of satiety in all of that to get through it, to get to where you are now, being used of the Lord? Uh, wh what do you think helped you through that, and how did you do that? Well, first of all, before I get into what really helped me out of this, um, like as I said, there was something that is missing. I knew that what normal children had, I didn't have it. And um, by the time I was reaching age nine, I was attempting to commit suicide mm. six times, but wasn't successful mm. until I was talking to an old woman in the community that I was living. And I said, I want to die. I don't want to live. I, I, I want to enjoy life. And I just can't enjoy life. What should I do? Yes. And that is when she introduced me to a church. Wonderful. And she said, why don't your grandmother take you to church? And I said, yes, but my grandmother is going to church. And she says, no, I know of a preacher that can lay hand and pray for you. Wonderful. And I said, wait, a preacher can lay hand and pray for me? Nobody wants to touch me. Right. Nobody wants to hug me. I, I never knew what it was like for a mother to hold a child. Because my mother had five other children that she had to love. She loves me very much. But she did not want this disease to spread on others. Yeah. And so she had to put me aside a little while. But when this woman introduced me and she said that a pastor will lay hand and pray for you, I said, are you sure that a pastor would want to touch me? Look at my body. I'm sick. I, I'm not worthy. And she came and she talked to my grandmother. And thank God for praying, grandmother. Yes. Took me to the service and the pastor lay hand and prayed for me. And I can remember vividly, he said, do you believe in miracles? I said, what are you talking about? As a child, you don't understand yes. what miracles are really about. He said, do you believe that God can take that sickness away from you? And I remember I start, began to cry. Tears rolled my cheeks, and I said, can God really heal me? Can I be made whole? And he said, yes. He said, if you believe that God will heal you, you will be healed. Yes. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Whoever you are, Jesus. I don't know about Jesus. Right. I grew up in a non-Christian home. Yes. I said, but whoever you are, Jesus, can you come and heal me right now? And he prayed for me. And I leave that service disappointed, Pastor, because I did not see anything that I was told that he's going to heal me. But one day I woke up the next morning mm. and Rubella was gone Wonderful. within one week. Awesome. And I give God glory. And that is where I said, wait, I have purpose. Yes. God has a purpose yes. for me. And I become inquisitive. I wanted to know more about this Jesus that came that night and healed me. That's, what, that's why I love the Lord. Because he has a way of taking this least likely. Amen. I, and doing something wonderful with them. It, when people have written people off, God has a way of just coming along and say, you know what? I won't use him, him, or her. I'm, I'm going to use him because... Based on where he's coming from, his testimony is going to be huge. And it's, isn't it something that God uses our weaknesses and our infirmities Amen. to get the greatest testimony out of us? Amen. If I may say this, Pastor, that uh, my mother taught that I would die. And because she loved me so much, even though she had five other children, 
She didn't want to, me to die in front of her. And that is why she had to separate me from my siblings and sent me to live with my grandparents because I was seven years old with 43 pounds. Mm. And that's not normal. No. I, 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 I don't know what is it to enjoy a meal with my family because all I'm concerned is that I've been scorned by society, that I'm rejected. Life doesn't have any purpose for me anymore. But again, as you said, I thank God for Jesus. He looked beyond our sicknesses. He looked beyond our diseases, especially when he knows he has a plan for our life. Amen. Now, you, you grew up in a household um, with, with people uh, who weren't necessarily believers. I know your grandmother was, but were, were the rest of your siblings believers as well? No, at that time, no. We're not. No. How, how did that affect you? Because there are people watching us who, who are saying, you know what, that, that sounds good and great, you know. Right. Jesus is wonderful and he can he heal us. And ultimately he wants us to become saved and be believers. But, but can I be the only one in my class, in my school, in my home that, that's, that's of a righteous order or is living a righteous lifestyle? Many people don't think they can do that. How, how, yeah. did, you, how did you manage with that? It, it was very difficult. And the reason why it was very difficult is because after I was healed, I was sent back to live with my parents to live a normal life. But it was so difficult because uh, when I wanted to talk about Jesus, my brothers, they used to be laughing at me. And they're like, no, you, you, you're going nuts. Something is wrong with you. We don't talk Jesus in our house. Yeah. We believe that we are serving a God that we can see that yes. is made out of... Of, of stones and uh, a, a God that we can go talk to uh, even though they don't talk to us and and this Jesus thing you're talking about is not what we want and there was great rejection with my family even though God healed me uh, my father and my mother began to be persecuted in the community mm. why are you allowing your child to go to a Christian church yes. why do you want your child to become a Christian I actually was given name I become a black sheep in my family. Mm. I was even asked to remove, not to mention my last name anymore, because it, that's a disgrace. Because if you know, um, to be specific, I came out of a um, Hinduism, okay. and that we believe in, uh, at Dan, they believe in caste system. And I become a disgrace to the family, right. because I accept Jesus Christ. Healing, it was one thing, but living for God, but I knew that God has a purpose for me. Yes. And I knew that I would not be ungrateful to what Jesus Christ has done for me. How can I ever turn back from what he has done for me? I did not want to do so. Fear has gripped my heart that if I only turn away from the Jesus that I have discovered, I would return back to sickness. But not only that, that I'm afraid that I was fearful that I would return back to the sickness or my old life, but I'm so fearful of what can happen to me now because I found love. Yes. That was the most important thing. Yes. Other than what was happening in my life, I wanted love. And I found that peace in Jesus awesome. Christ. Awesome. And because I found that peace in Christ, I just want to hold on to him. I remember there are days I used to hug my pillow and I said, this is Jesus. When I was given my first Bible by the pastor in our little community church, he gave me a Bible and he said, this is God's word. And that's changed my life. He said, do you want God to speak to you? And probably I'm speaking to somebody out there yes. who is lonely right now. You're very lonely because you're being rejected, peer pressure, whatever the, the case might be, and you reject it. I felt like that loneliness because I was the only Christian, and I refused to, to refuse Jesus. I want him because he was the only one that could have transformed my life. And so the pastor told me, he said, if you want God to talk to you, he will speak to you. Yes, he will. And I said, how can God speak to me, pastor, when my mom and my dad used to take me to this God, and I always speak to that God and never speak back to me? He says, no, well, Jesus does speak back to you. And I said, but how can Jesus speak to me? I'm lonely. Now everybody is rejecting me because I'm talking about this Jesus that healed me. He said, okay, this word that I'm giving you will speak back to you. Yes. He said, 